What's up, guys? We're back, and it's Friday, so you know what time it is. It's time for What the Fitness. Let's get them. But first, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, algorithm, comment. Meow. Do it meow, right now. Sorry, I have lots of cats. I wish I could say this was not the Gary Brecker Show, but this is turning into the Gary Brecker Show. But if Gary would just start using some citations or not flinging things out of his mouth that are completely unsupported by data, we would stop talking about him. But here we are. Everybody else is talking about him. It does get really frustrating when you build your reputation up over 20 years and you do things like compete at a high level, do a ton of content over 20 years, a biochemistry degree, and then a PhD in nutrition, and you publish actual research, present findings, and talk with professors, and you know, all that shit. super time intensive. Just start a social media account, get some celebrity to endorse you, and start saying wild shit is apparently good enough to get famous. But hey, here we are. I even had Dana White go at me over this, and he did say, I had no clue who you were before this. Well, now I get out. Let's see what Gary has to say about bananas. Blended banana will raise your blood sugar faster than a teaspoon of straight table sugar. Mm -hmm. So the difference between eating a banana and blending a banana is it raises your blood sugar at four times the rate. So that's why you always tell me not to add bananas to my shake. Drink the shake, eat the berries. Drink the shake, eat the banana. Yeah. But to blend the banana, you're going to skyrocket your sugar. And a lot of times it's not the sugar itself. It's the rate at which it raises your blood sugar. Mm. So the glycemic index is kind of a measure of how fast does this have an effect on blood sugar. He is right about one thing. If you blend a banana, it will raise your blood sugar more than a teaspoon of sugar. Because a teaspoon of sugar is five grams of sugar. And a banana is usually like 15 to 20. It would raise your blood sugar more whether or not you blended it or kept it whole. As far as his claim that blending it is going to cause a much greater blood glucose response, he said four times greater rate. Whatever the f that means. One, Gary, where's your citation for that? Two, please define. Because when it comes to glycemic response, you have what's called the rate, okay? Your rate of appearance of glucose in the blood. Most people don't talk about that. I'm going to assume you're talking about the area under the curve. Either way, four times, four times, four times. If your normal blood glucose peaks at like 120, 150, like what are you saying it peaks at? What are you saying the area under the curve? Like this is just insane to suggest that. Here's what's even more insane. I could not find a study where they blended a banana versus eating it whole, looking at the glycemic response. But I could find quite a few studies where they blended various fruits, apples, various berries, mangoes. They blended those. And actually, Gary, the study showed that the blended group had a lower glycemic response than the whole fruit group because it's still maintaining the fiber that's in there. And the fiber is what has a big impact on glycemic response. Now, I don't exactly know the full mechanism of why this is happening, but it's actually been repeated in several studies. And I will link them below that if you blend fruit, it actually lowers the glycemic response. Should you actually give a about the glycemic response is the other question. Because I will tell you that when they look at studies where they equate calories and vary the glycemic index, of the different diets, they see no difference in fat loss. They see no difference in basically any health marker. And so the glycemic index can be useful for individuals who need some guidance on food choices because foods that are low glycemic index tend to be higher in fiber and more satiating. But that is not always the case. For example, a plain baked potato has a high glycemic index but it also has a very, very high satiety index. Just blanketly worrying about the glycemic index while ignoring all the other factors is silly. The claim you're making that it makes the glycemic response four times higher, one, that number is insane. Two, it, the research actually shows the exact opposite. Now, if you have a study you'd like to cite, Go ahead and cite it. Guys, we're still trying to book a debate with Gary Brecca. Have not confirmed it yet. He said over Instagram DM that he would in fact do it. Gary, if you're gonna come to a debate with me, I really hope you bring some citations and be ready to back them up. And my advice to you is to actually read them because I promise you, I will. So the citations of the peer-reviewed randomized control trials do not support what you're claiming. In fact, they show the opposite. And finally, apparently you don't have a great handle on dosage either because your comment about a blended banana raising blood sugar 
more than a teaspoon of actual sugar, file that right under the notion category. A teaspoon of sugar is five grams. It's a very small amount of sugar. It's not going to impact your blood glucose that much, but a full-size banana, whether it's whole or blended, will certainly raise your blood sugar more. I don't know what the hype is with this guy. I, I don't get it. Again, I probably took the very long circuitous route of actually trying to get advanced degrees and publish actual research and coach people for decades before I actually became an influencer. But I get that that is a, you know, if you want to become famous really quickly, that's probably pretty, you know, daunting to actually like, you know, do stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you want to be in the data camp, make sure you pick up your data over feeling shirt. Link in the description of the bio lane store to pick it up. I'll catch you guys next week.